Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' entrancing book. Weirdest thing I've ever heard. What do you suppose it can be? It is impossible to say, Monsieur Clayton. Different tribes have different methods of producing such sounds. To me, at least, it doesn't sound human. Uh, no, Philander, it, it is distinctly mechanical. A uh, sort of compelling tool, don't you think? But yes, Monsieur Le Possessor, that is its purpose. To entice you away from your friends, to follow it, and then, voila, believe. Dano, you're acquainted with their methods. What do you make of the noise? Two things, Monsieur Clayton. First, that they know where we are. Second, that knowing where we are and not attacking us leads me to believe that we outnumber them, or else they would not use this sound if they would attack at once. Uh, very logical explanation, but, but now, no, what do we do? That thing at first, oh, we cannot go to sleep. That would be foolish. We cannot light a fire to make a mark of ourselves, but we must watch for the wild beast. But we can't stay here forever. We must do something. Tell them all. When these blacks find that we are not to be lured by their witch doctor sounds and that we are watchful, they will go. And when they move, we shall follow. Uh, no matter how much the weird sounds might appeal to, to my penchant for investigation, I should never voluntarily follow such sounds. Uh, no, not you, Monsieur Le Professeur. But the uncultured blacks also have the penchant for investigation. But they lack the intelligence that says, stay where you are. Listen to that. Distinctly uncomfortable feeling, this, of unseen enemies. I may be wrong, monsieur, but that to me signalizes their departure. And then what? We shall settle down for the night, and in the morning we follow. But we have followed. We've caught up with them, in fact, and nothing came of it. What in the Monsieur name Caton, of... you do not understand these primitive people as do I. If we were to attack them, they would in turn fight until the last man dropped, and then... We should have no other way to discover Mademoiselle Portel's whereabouts except to look and look and look for a cannibal village. But set my told, in this way, mon ami, we leave them unmolested and they lead us where we want to go. Well, I hope you're right. I'm sure after the time that has been... Here is he! Speak! Qu'est-ce que tu Pierre? What is the matter, Pierre? Your men seem to be carrying something. A man... A black man. He seems to be in the last stages of exhaustion. Buona. Buona. Uh, Jambo, Tundi. Tuba. Bado kidogo. Buona. Tuba bayasana. Okabaka. Beat man. Tuba. Inshai. Boma. Can you understand him, Dano? But yes. He says they beating his tribe were badly treated by their white boss on the plantation and were on their way to their native crown. Ask him if he knows anything about... about Jane. I'm afraid, Monsieur Le Professeur, there is no use asking him anything more. No, Professor. He is dead. The fellow must have been tortured unmercifully. Look here. There, Monsieur, is the answer to why I have to patrol this coastline. That is a sample of the white man's authority. Uh, you don't need to tell me that, that a white man did this. His skin is white, and he wields powerful political influence. Every so often, some of these blacks rebel, just as this man's tribe evidently did. He said that they were on their way back to their kraal, their village, thought that we might interfere with them, and, well, monsieur, you know as much about the rest as I do. Well... If we have to spend the night here, I propose that we at least make ourselves as comfortable as possible. But yes. Paris, mes enfants, make the fire, and we come. The jungle night closes in, oppressive and sullen. The stifled wind, heavy with the sweetness of jungle flowers, hovers in the denseness of the thicket, stirs lazily the leafy fullness of the tropic trees. On the little platform in the branches, bathed in brilliant moonlight, Jane Porter and Tarzan watch the stars one by one as they cut the velvet darkness of the sky. Both are silent, Jane thinking of her father and trying the next instant to thrust the thought into the background. Tarzan, understanding feels that when the silence is broken, she must break it. I... I suppose I must get used to it. I... I can hardly realize it yet, that here, in this jungle, I must spend the rest of my life. 
Right? Right? Oh, <laughs> it's too much for you, white skin. Life for you is simple, primitive. For me, it is, or rather was, quite a complicated affair. Affair? <laughs> That's also too hard, white skin. Your lessons must be along simpler lines. Look, white skin. Jane takes Tarzan's grass rope, then the quiver with its arrows, the bow, and holding them one by one, she gives them their names as she points to them. Rope, white skin. Rope. Rope? Rope? Rope. That's it. And now, this is arrow. Arrow? Arrow? Arrow. Yes. And you shoot the arrow with the bow. Bow. Bow? Bow. Bow, arrow, shoot, kill. Concise and expressive. Now, look. Look? Look? Look. Uh, look is to, uh, to, uh, to, well, 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 to look. And Jane, suiting the action to the word, shades her eyes with her hand and peers from side to side. Look. Look. See. Look. See. Look. See. That's right, White Skin. Look. See. Look. Look. Tarzan takes Jane by the arm, points down the jungle trail. Jane's eyes search the gloomy depths of the forest. Tarzan points to a clump of wild bulrushes bordering the lowland where it falls away to the water hole. A lion? Numa. Numa? Lion? Numa. Lion. Jane watches the king of beasts pad his silent way down the trail. Again, Tarzan grips her arm and points to the opposite end of the clearing. Sheeta. Sheeta. Horta. Numa. Sheeta. Kill. Eat. Horta. It's a leopard. And a boar. As Jane says the word, Horta the boar sent Sheeta and darts in the opposite direction. Numa, feeling that he loses me, falls forward. Numa and Sheeta, both intent on Horta the boar, have not seen one another. Jane wants to cover her eyes with her hands, but fascinated, she watches. Sheeta gathers his slim, muscular horses under him. The brute's lips curl back, the long, spotted tail straightens. Sheeta springs. Numa stiffens his four legs, braces his twenty bolts. With a roar, the lion springs. The beasts meet in midair. <laughs> escapes into the underbrush. Sheeta's tearing working claws dig into Numa's shoulders. Numa thrusts out his four paws out his tremendous strength is bent on keeping the leopard from getting its long claws onto the sheep's oh, in the ribs. Spotted cat's jaws snap again and again at Numa's throat. They fall sideways, roll over, roll over. Now the leopard's on top. The baleful eyes gleam as the hot voice falls over its way into the lion's tawny mane. Numa lashes out with his hind legs, springs to his feet. One swift, mighty blow of his claw sends the leopard staggering. Before Sheeta can recover, Numa launches himself on the cat's back. The huge mouth opens, snaps shut on Sheeta's spine. The leopard drops where he stands. Dead. Horrible. Numa kill Sheeta. Lion kill Sheeta? Yes, yes, I, I suppose it was fair, since the leopard attacked first. As Jane Porter watches, Numa, king of the beasts, with one disdainful look at his vanquished enemy, silently, majestically resumes his way to where he will find some other prey, the water hole. Far off in the black depths of the jungle, Professor Porter, Philander, Clayton, Darno, and the party of sailors under his command await the daybreak. Are you asleep, monsieur? I, for one, am not. Uh, no, Lieutenant. Uh, neither am I. One of my outposts just reported lights moving in the brush. Torch, as he said. Then perhaps we'd better not go to sleep. If you can sleep, monsieur, do so. I have double the watch. But sleep with your rifles at your sides, and on any signal of alarm, do not move any more than to rise to your knees. That's very well, Lieutenant. You may depend upon me. Uh, where is Philander? I, I don't hear his voice. He lay down beside me. He may be asleep. Uh, uh, Philander... Uh, Philander. Uh, uh, no matter what circumstances, Philander always uh, could get to sleep. Uh, the number of times He's I... He's not here. What, monsieur? You are sure? Si? Here is where he lay down. Au dame! A moi, vite! Philander! 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 Come on! 